Hi friends, welcome to Study IQ. I am Shruti Bennur. Today's lecture will be very helpful for all the Karnataka State Public Service Commission exams. Here we are going to study about the current affairs of Karnataka, August month 2018. Meanwhile, let us also enhance our general knowledge about certain topics that we come across here. So let us start. Recently, Roots online company gave its report. And according to that, India's two international airports are in the list of world's top 10 fastest growing airports. Fastest growing in the sense there is a growth in number of passengers traveling. Kempegoda International Airport which is uh, in Bengaluru is the second fastest growing airport in the world. And Indira Gandhi International Airport which is in Delhi is in the sixth place. Haneda Airport, which is in Tokyo, Japan, is in the top position. Haneda Airport. It is the top one fastest growing airport in the world. Bengaluru Airport has recorded 1 crore 58 lakh 50 thousand 352 passengers in the first half of 2018. And this is an increase of 41,80,852 passengers against the same period last year. Let us understand more about Kempegoda International Airport. Before the establishment of this Kempegoda International Airport, there was HAL Airport in Bengaluru, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited Airport. HAL Airport served as Bangalore's domestic and international airport until May 2008. Later, due to increased congestion, Bangalore International Airport was established at Devanahalli. The earlier name was Bengaluru International Airport, which was established in 2008 itself. This airport was officially renamed as Kempegoda International Airport in 2013. Kempegoda International Airport is owned and operated by BIAL, Bengaluru International Airport Limited. And Kempegoda International Airport is Karnataka's first fully solar powered airport. And this airport is all set to become country's first Aadhaar enabled airport by 2018. First Aadhaar enabled airport. This is mainly to replace the cumbersome ordeal of handling the tickets, ID, luggage with smooth, mainly to have the paperless travelling experience. There are totally two international airports in Karnataka. One is Kempegoda International Airport which is in Bangalore. Another one is Mangaluru International Airport which is in Mangaluru. Who is the current governor of Karnataka? Yes, Shri Vajubai Wala. He is the governor of Karnataka. And the official residence of governor of Karnataka is this Raj Bhavan, which is in Bengaluru. Raj Bhavan was in news. As an Independence Day gift from 15th August till 31st August, this Raj Bhavan was opened for public. And this is for the first time public were allowed inside this Raj Bhavan. Governor Vajubai Wala said that anyone can visit Raj Bhavan till 31st August from 4.30pm to 7pm after online booking. Through Karnataka Tourism Department guides, public in batches were allowed to enter the Raj Bhavan premises and their each batch was given 20 minutes time to see the premises. There is a glass house inside and there are 19 bedrooms. And all the rooms are named after famous Indian rivers and Indian mountains. This Raj Bhavan is a century old building. It's a heritage site. This building was built by British Commissioner Sir Mark Cubon between 1840 to 1842. He was the commissioner of the then Mysuru territories. This Raj Bhavan was formerly uh, known during British India as Bangalore Residency and now it is called as Raj Bhavan, which is the official residence of Governor of Karnataka. Okay, in August 2018, Karnataka state government launched Swachha Meva Jayate. Swachha Meva Jayate is a campaign to make people in rural Karnataka take a pledge on cleanliness. 
as you can see uh, in the images primary and high school students attended this event they launched this campaign they took a pledge and the pledge was like this it is our duty as citizens to ensure that our land and environment are conserved and a huge part of that is in ensuring that we keep our surroundings clean this was the pledge and department of rural development released logo of the campaign here you can see a little boy and a little girl standing in front of karnataka map and who is the current minister of rural development krishna bhaire gowda he is the current minister of rural development law and parliamentary affairs he also attended this event you can see in the image let us understand more about this swachh meva jayate so you all know about swachh bharat mission swachh bharat mission will conduct a survey which is called as swachh sarvekshan gramin and it is uh, undertaken by ministry of drinking water and sanitation what swachh sarvekshan gramin will do it will measure and rank villages across india on the basis of availability of toilets access to the toilets cleanliness of public spaces it also takes the feedback and opinions of citizens this swachh meva jayate campaign coincides with the swachh sarvekshan gramin swachh meva jayate will aim to take messages about the parameters of survey to every rural household in karnataka and children play key role in spreading awareness about the various parameters in every district every village children's are the highlights here it is difficult to change the mindsets of the adults right but children's learn quickly so children's are used in this campaign which is the oldest zoo in karnataka shri chamarajendra zoological garden this is in mysuru this is the oldest zoo in karnataka in fact this is one of the oldest zoos in india as well this was created in 1892 on 10 acres of land there is a news related to this zoo which i'll tell in the coming slides before that let us try to understand more about this zoo the earlier name of this zoo was palace zoo and now the name is shri chamarajendra zoological garden chamarajendra wadeer was the mysuru king and in those days public were not allowed here now it is open for public it is open for public from uh, around 1902 and the administration of this zoo is under zoo authority of karnataka it is not under forest department administration of mysuru zoo is under zoo authority of karnataka from 1979 and zoo authority of karnataka is the first autonomous organization in india to manage a zoo there are many animals and birds conserved here and there is an animal adoption program which was started in 1990s uh, as per that adoption program you can adopt your favorite animal or a bird and you can contribute towards feeding of the animal for one full year by this you will be a part of mysuru zoo's efforts in wildlife conservation anybody can adopt animals or birds in this zoo by paying certain fixed amount of uh, money and that amount is different for different species many celebrities have adopted animals or birds here like anil kumble ms dhoni even the sandalwood actor darshan has adopted animals here and recently rbi reserve bank of india's arm bharatiya reserve bank note mudran private limited which is at mysuru renewed its adoption of animals at mysuru since 2015 itself bharatiya reserve bank note mudran private limited brb nmpl mysuru had displayed its commitment towards wildlife conservation it had adopted animals in 2015 itself it has recently renewed its adoption of animals this is for the third time it is renewing it has adopted zebra giraffe asiatic lion tiger an african hunting cheetah which are in the uh, mysuru zoo or chamarajendra zoological garden see the interest shown by this brb nmpl which is the arm of rbi reserve bank of india uh, for adopting these large mammals is really commendable this will inspire other corporate bodies and charitable institutions for taking part in this animal adoption scheme
Since we are talking about this Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited, let us understand more about this. Do you know in which all locations the Indian currency notes are printed? Here is the map that shows the distribution of bank note printing presses in India. There are five locations. One is in the West Bengal, the place is Salboni. Another one is Maharashtra, the place is Nasik. In Karnataka, it is in Mysuru. And in Madhya Pradesh, there are two pr printing presses. One is at Hoshangabad, another one is at Devas. See, the bank note printing in India started in 1928. Before 1928, Indian currency notes were got printed from United Kingdom. In 1928, Indian, India's security press uh, at Nasik was established by government of India. And later, the second banknote printing press was established in Divas in Madhya Pradesh in 1975 by government of India. With the growth in population and economic activity, demand for bank notes uh, was steadily increasing. To bridge the gap between demand and the supply of the notes, government of India decided to establish two new bank note printing presses, one at Mysuru in Karnataka, another one at Salboni in West Bengal. Actually, this project was initiated by government of India, but later this project was transferred to Reserve Bank of India in 1989. Reserve Bank of India formed a wholly owned subsidiary that is Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited to complete the project. And now this BRB NMPL manages the affairs of the two presses, West Bengal and Mysore, that is Karnataka's Mysore printing press. Here you can see the image. This is the Bank Note Paper Mill India Private Limited at Mysuru. This is a joint venture between Security Printing and Minting Corporation of India Limited and Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited, BRB and MPL. And this is engaged in production of bank note papers with a capacity of 12,000 TPA in Mysuru, Karnataka. Now the next important current affair is the pest infestation and Karnataka farmers are in trouble. Which is that pest? Fall army worm. Fall army worm infestation is spreading across Karnataka. It has already affected 9 agroclimatic zones of Karnataka. In African continents, this particular pest has already destroyed thousands of hectares of maize crop. Now it has entered India. In Karnataka, it is mainly affecting uh, or it is mainly damaging maize and sorghum crops and farmers are suffering a huge loss because of this pest. In Kannada, this particular pest is called as uh, Laddi Hula because it excretes heavily on the crops. Let us understand more about this uh, pest and also find out the reasons for the outbreak of this uh, pest infestation. Fall Army Worm it's a caterpillar as you can see in the image. It can destroy a variety of crops. Mainly it is uh, damaging maize and sorghum in Karnataka. Scientific name of fall armyworm is Spodoptera frigiparida. The lifespan of the pest is 30 to 60 days and each generation can migrate to a distance of more than 400 kilometers. The main reason for the outbreak of armyworm is monocropping. Monocropping means growing a single crop over a vast area. Monocropping brings damage to the soil ecology. The diversity of the nutrients in soil will be depleted with monocropping and this makes crops vulnerable to the pest infestation. In Karnataka, the area of cultivation of maize has increased, almost doubled. The area of cultivation of maize was just 6.6 .6 lakh hectare in 2001. Now it is 14 lakh hectare. The paddy growers in Mallard region have switched to maize because paddy requires more labor and also more water compared to maize. So the paddy growers in Mallard region switched to, uh, to maize. Hence the area of cultivation of maize increased there also. In many parts of Karnataka, monocropping of maize is practiced. This is the main cause for the outbreak of this uh, army worm. Which places in Karnataka are affected by armyworm? 
ದಾವಣಗೆರೆ ಚಿತ್ರದುರ್ಗ ಹಾವೇರಿ ಬೆಳಗಾವಿ ಬಳ್ಳಾರಿ ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರ ಕೋಲಾರ ಭದ್ರಾವತಿ ಸೊರಬ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶಿಕಾರಿಪುರ ತಾಲೂಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಶಿವಮೊಗ್ಗ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಹಾಸನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ದ ನೈನ್ ಆಗ್ರೋ ಕ್ಲೈಮೆಟಿಕ್ ಝೋನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಆರ್ ಅಫೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿಸ್ ಆಮಿ ವಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ ಅಫೇರ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಪಾಲಿಟಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಪಾಯಿಂಟೆಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಲಾಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಅಡಿಷನಲ್ ಅಡ್ವೊಕೇಟ್ ಜನರಲ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಹೈಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಅಡ್ವೊಕೇಟ್ ಜನರಲ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಲೀಗಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಪಾಯಿಂಟೆಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಲಾಯರ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಅಡಿಷನಲ್ ಅಡ್ವೊಕೇಟ್ ಜನರಲ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಉದಯ್ ಹೊಳ್ಳ ದ ಅಡ್ವೊಕೇಟ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ and these are the additional advocate generals as ponnanna and dinesh rao dinesh rao is an additional advocate general for dharwad bench uh, dharwad bench of high court and sandesh chauta kalburgi bench nitin ramesh bengaluru bench of high court there are three high court benches in karnataka one is in bengaluru another one is in dharwad and kalburgi who is the first indian chief judge of chief court of mysuru tambu chetty he served as chief judge from 1890 till 1895 and in 1956 first november our karnataka state was formed r venkata ramaya became the first chief justice of unified mysore state or karnataka in 1956 karnataka was formed but the name uh, was not given like karnataka was not the name it was called as ekikruta mysore rajya or unified mysore state this karnataka name was given to our state in 1973 our state was formed in 1956 that is why we celebrate karnataka rajyotsava on 1st november and in 1956 the first chief justice was r venkata ramaya he served as the chief justice from 1956 till 16th july 1957 okay now who is the current chief justice of uh, high court of karnataka Justice Dinesh Maheshwari is the Chief Justice of High Court of Karnataka now. Okay, let us uh, revise the difference between the Advocate General and Attorney General. Advocate General is for the state. He will give advice to the state government in legal matters. Attorney General give advice to the Indian government in legal matters. It's a, both are the constitutional posts. Both posts are mentioned in our constitution. and advocate general is appointed as per article 165 of indian constitution this is very important present advocate general of karnataka state is uday halla and attorney general is appointed by president of india under article 76 clause 1 the current attorney general of india is k k venugopal he is the 15th attorney general of india Okay, here is the current affair related to the use of technology in governance. Karnataka state government uses unmanned aerial systems or drones in governance. They use drone in agriculture, urban infrastructure and also policing. Pilot project has been launched in the month of August 2018. Karnataka Science and Technology Promotion Society implement this project in coordination with other concerned departments. remember karnataka science and technology promotion society implement this project okay here is one success story where drones were of great help this was reported in august 2018 in sagara taluk karnataka state excise department identified ganja plants using drones you all know that ganja plant or ganja crop is a banned crop it is illegal to grow this plant it's a psychoactive drug this ganja plant contains a chemical substance that changes the brain function it results in alterations in perception mood and also the behavior growing ganja crop is banned in india under narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance act but some land owners had grown ganja crop secretly amidst ginger crop they had grown this ganja plant under ginger crop in sarekoppa village of sagara taluk but drone cameras had captured the images of this ganja crop 
department used three drones for the surveillance each drone has a maximum flight distance of 1.5 kilometers and a maximum flight time of 20 minutes and based on the inputs the excise personnel raided the plots and seized 8 kg of ganja plants and cases under narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance act have been booked against the owners of the land now an awareness program would be held at the village on the ill effects of consumption of ganja and those who indulge in its cultivation transportation or sale would be subjected to legal punishment excise department has also received inputs that after the launch of the operation many farmers who had planted ganja in sagara taluk after the onset of monsoon this year have voluntarily destroyed the crop Karnataka government has started state wide road improvement program and Asian Development Bank is going to support this program recently in the month of august india has inked dollar 346 million loan agreement with asian development bank to finance karnataka state highways improvement phase 3 project this is for the improvement of 400 kilometers of state highway This will help in enhancement of the connectivity and access to economic centers across 12 districts in Karnataka. Asian Development Bank is an international regional development bank. The main motto of this bank is to fight poverty in Asia and Pacific. The headquarters of this uh, this bank is in Philippines. That is Manila. Here is India and here is Philippines. headquarters of asian development bank is in philippines here is the next news what is this this is the schematic representation showing how the power is generated using solar energy photovoltaic cells are used here solar is one of the fastest growing energy sources in the world and solar energy is renewable free source of energy that is sustainable and totally inexhaustible solar energy is totally inexhaustible it will not get exhausted unlike fossil fuels fossil fuels are finite they get exhausted fossil fuels are like coal oil natural gas all these are fossil fuels that we use in our day to day life they get exhausted but solar energy is totally inexhaustible now the karnataka is in news for floating solar power plants What are these floating solar power plants? I'll tell that in the coming slides but before that let us understand the modern importance of solar energy. See the global energy demands are increasing and we are mostly dependent on fossil fuels which have the side effects. They are not eco-friendly. They damage our environment. So solar energy is the best alternative for fossil fuels. Hence India is concentrating much on increasing the solar power generation capacity. In fact it is one of the ambitious projects of the central government. Central government has the target of achieving renewable power capacity of 225 gigawatts by March 2022. Remember this target? This is the target of central government. Actually the earlier target was 175 gigawatts but we reached the target well ahead of the deadline. now the target has been uh, increased the target is 225 gigawatts by march 2022 solar parks are being established across india and uh, in pavgada in karnataka also world's largest solar park was recently established pavgada taluk is in tumkuru district of karnataka this park was established in 13000 acres of uh, area why pavgada was selected the most obvious reason this region receives high solar radiation and there is a great uh, availability of land also this region uh, receives very little rainfall and this region has been declared drought hit by karnataka government 54 times in the past 6 decades that is also one of the reason to select this and it is a very scarcely populated area most of the people have uh, migrated to bengaluru By the end of 2018 the park is planned to have a total capacity of 2000 megawatt and it will be the world's biggest solar farm. Now the recent news is about floating solar power plants in Karnataka. 
what are these floating solar power plants here the solar panel floats on water mangaluru refinery and petrochemicals limited mrpl has set up this floating solar power plants on three water storage reservoirs on its premises the same mrpl had commissioned the largest solar power project in refinery site in the country in april 2018 here you can see they have wisely utilized the land this is the parking lot and have put solar panels on the roof here and these are the various other images of solar panels in a uh, refinery now the same mrpl has set up floating solar power plants in its premises there are certain advantages of floating solar power plants over the ones that are set up on the land those advantages are here floating panels conserve water through reduction of evaporation i'll show the photograph of floating solar power plant in the next slide those uh, solar panels will be on the water and because of that there will be reduction of evaporation so they conserve the water and cooling effect of water enable increased solar power generation and they also require less installation time okay, this is the photograph of floating solar power plant this is how it exactly looks this is uh, in china world's largest floating solar power plant is in china and here what you are seeing is india's largest floating solar power plant this is on banasura sagar reservoir in vinad kerala as of december 2017 kerala has the largest floated pv solar project now in karnataka in mangaluru refinery and petrochemicals limited floating solar power plants are being established okay here is the question what percentage of the total geographical area should be under forest or tree cover as per the recommendation of national forest policy here are the options 20% 23% 33% or 36% okay on independence day green mysuru drive was launched this was launched by karnataka forest department as a part of hasiru karnataka hasiru karnataka is the forest department initiative in which saplings will be planted in vacant places of government offices educational institutions and open spaces this is mainly to increase the green cover because the recommendation of national forest policy is 33% 33% should be the forest cover as per national forest policy but karnataka has only 22.56% so forest department has started this hasiru karnataka to increase the green cover as a part of hasiru karnataka green mysuru drive was launched on independence day in mysuru okay now next uh, there is a recent update related to yoga and karnataka current affairs before that let us try to recall some some facts or information related to yoga so here is a question what was the theme for international yoga day in 2018 theme was yoga for harmony and peace we celebrate uh, yoga day international day of yoga every year on 21st june when first yoga day was observed worldwide 21st june 2015 first yoga day was observed worldwide on 21st june 2015 and who suggested this date 21st june and why 21st june indian prime minister narendra modi ji in his un address united nation un address suggested this date 21st june as international yoga day he selected this date because 21st june is the longest day of the year in northern hemisphere and it shares special significance in many parts of the world so he selected 21st june as international yoga day and in 2015 itself yoga was started as compulsory subject from class 6th to 10th in central government run schools and states were free to decide on adopting yoga in their syllabus and to link with the with their course curriculum 
now karnataka government has made yoga a mandatory in all colleges and universities starting from this academic year it will be mandatory for all colleges and universities across the state to ensure that yoga is taught in their institutions 20 minutes yoga each day this will apply to private colleges also all government aided and private colleges should conduct 20 minute yoga many have welcomed this decision of the government and currently only some universities have courses in yoga so a committee has been formed it will examine the frequency and design the uh, design the program okay here is another update related to education sector in karnataka he is the higher education minister gt devegowda karnataka state higher education council has given in principle approval to karnataka state education policy and this education policy has certain recommendations prepared by karnataka knowledge commission here are those recommendations monitoring the fixation of fees encouraging technology enabled learning giving an impetus to research activities institutes have an academic performance index of teachers academic performance index of teachers this index will not only act, assess the performance but it also look into the professional development of the teachers okay here is another update again related to education sector here is the good news for karnataka state open university mysuru this university was struggling for the want of affiliation from university grant commission ugc now the ugc uh, has recognized karnataka state open university mysuru on 14th august 2018 this karnataka state open university is in manas gangotri campus in mysuru city and ugc has recognized it ugc is a statutory body established by an act of parliament by the government UGC provides recognition to the universities in India and it also disburses the funds to the recognized universities and colleges the headquarters of this UGC is in new delhi it has six regional centers also one is in our bangalore itself uh, other regional centers are at pune bhopal kolkata hyderabad guwahati get okay, 10 engineering colleges to get world bank funding it is the part of third phase of technical education quality improvement project this is all about improving the quality and equity of technical education that is offered in the state uh, vishveshwara technological university vtu and nine private engineering institutions in karnataka state have signed memorandum of understanding with the world bank the institutions chosen for this uh, project are bms college of engineering dr ambedkar institute of technology uh, both are in bengaluru and shri jay chamarajendra college of engineering national institute uh, institute of engineering these two are in mysuru and pes uh, college of engineering in mandya malnad college of engineering in hasan and uh, uh, in kalburgi there is uh, hke pda college of engineering in hubballi bvb college of engineering and in bagalkot basveshwar engineering college these institutions have been chosen for this project and world bank is funding these engineering institutions in karnataka state okay where the headquarters of this world bank located it is in washington dc united states world bank is an international inst uh, financial institution it provides loans to the countries of the world for capital projects who is the president of this world bank now jim yong kim is the president of world bank and united nations un is the parent organization of this bank okay karnataka government minor irrigation department is to construct 11 vented dams here you can see the image of vented dams they'll be having the openings minor irrigation department is to construct 11 vented dams across west flowing rivers in dakshina kannada west flowing rivers see west flowing rivers generally flow westward and they meet arabian sea after a short run of 50 kilometers to 300 kilometers they meet arabian sea 
the proposed amount for this is 265.25 crores and this will be executed under paschima vahini project this paschima vahini project was approved in uh, 2017 itself by karnataka government under this project series of vented dams or check dams will be uh, built to augment the water during summer in the three coastal districts of karnataka dakshina kannada uttara kannada and udupi district okay anka samudra reserve which is in ballari district of karnataka is yielding desired results it has become birds paradise many birds are coming here now and they are attracting nature lovers karnataka state wildlife board had notified this as bird conservation reserve in 2016 and now it is yielding good results desired results this is the natural bird sanctuary in ballari district this is the first bird conservation reserve declared in entire hyderabad karnataka region anka samudra reserve okay what is this electric cars see the early electric car built by thomas parker in 1895 was like this now the electric cars are available like this uh, in the markets these electric cars have numerous benefits right the most obvious being increased fuel economy this will not pollute the environment zero emission and it's a quieter ride no noise pollution as well meanwhile these cars are not suitable for long distance travel people do not prefer electric cars for long distance travel people fear that the battery may run out but they prefer fuel cars fuel cars are safe because we find many fuel stations on the way so people use fuel cars for the long distance travel and do not prefer electric cars but now there is no need to worry bescom is doing something for this bescom is bengaluru electricity supply company limited government of karnataka undertaking bescom is planning to set up e vehicle charging points in bengaluru city and also in the highway and bcci that is bengaluru chamber of industry and commerce has proposed to partner with bescom to support setting up of electric vehicle charging points bescom is looking at installing ev fast charging points at 83 locations across the bengaluru city and these points will come up in a distance of 3 kilometers from each other in the locations like bbmp parking lots metro stations and other public spaces where vehicles can park and uh, recharge their batteries it is planning to set up uh, uh, e vehicle charging points on highways also on highways to encourage people to use their electric cars for long distance travel uh, there's a plan going on to establish charging points for every 25 km just like how fuel stations are located now there'll be e charging stations the stations are being planned on uh, bengaluru mysuru highway and bengaluru chennai highway there will be all the required facilities in these stations like cafeterias restrooms play areas and more as people will have to wait at least 20 minutes right to, to charge to get their vehicles charged so there is some uh, there will be some facilities like cafeteria restroom and all uh, they are preparing the report uh, which will be submitted to the central government and are positive that they will receive the necessary support as the center is promoting uh, electric vehicles now it will help in curbing the air pollution to some extent this is really a good move okay, here is the news on asian games there is a relation between this asian game and karnataka before that let us have a look at some highlights of this asian games this was held from 18th august to 2nd september 2018 and for the first time the asian games were co-hosted in two cities two cities of indonesia one is jakarta another one is palembang here you can see this is palembang and this is jakarta jakarta is the capital of indonesia opening and closing ceremony of asian games were held at this stadium gelora bung karno main stadium in jakarta and a japanese swimmer rikako iki japanese swimmer she was announced as the most valuable player of the asian games 
China won maximum number of medals. This is for the tenth consecutive time, and India's rank eighth. India won fifteen gold medals, twenty-four silver medals, and thirty bronze medals. One girl from Karnataka, from Belagavi, her name is Malaprabha Jadav. She won bronze medal in Kurush game. Kurush is a form of wrestling. For the first time, this game was introduced in Asian Games this year. Malaprabha Jadav won bronze medal in this game. Malaprabha Jadav is the daughter of farmer in Belagavi. Malaprabha was honored with Ekalavya Award from Karnataka State Government, and now she participated in Asian Games, won bronze medal. She again made us feel proud. Even Pinky Balhara, she won silver medal in the same category in Kurush Games itself. Let us congratulate all those who participated in Asian Games and won medals. Study IQ is selling pen drive courses for various government exams. There is a pen drive course on Karnataka GK also. This will help you to clear KPSC exams. All the best. Thank you.